Hello, everyone, and thanks for HR7 and Duke to having us. My name is Michele Mottini from, from Care Evolution. So uh, Care, uh, Care Evolution is a, is a company where main, our main business is doing uh, with health information exchange and data aggregation. But now we are also uh, started to do some patient facing application. And what I'm going to present today, what I'm going to speak today about is my FHR, that is a application for designed explicitly for patients to manage all their medical data for, for themselves and for their family. It's, a, it's an iOS application. It's, a, it's, a, it's released, so it's available on the Apple Store. You can download it and use it now. And it's also available as a web application. So you can use it when you're at home. You can use it on, the, on your computer. And when you are everywhere else, you can use it on your, on your phone. And we're going to ask this in any case. So we, we don't have an Android version yet. But we are working on it, so we'll eventually have also uh, as an Android app. So how does Fire get into the picture? We use Fire to get data inside your application. So a patient that has one portal or multiple portals with their data at their providers can, from our app, connect to, this, to the portals and download their data. And then, one the, and then we can manage all the data in an in integrated way in the, in the app. So here is the diagram that was going to come. So the, the way it works is that we have a single server in the cloud, my FHR server, that is used to the, the apps and the web application connect to it. The, <coughs> via the login to the Fire providers, the, the server has the tokens for the patients and use this token to connect to all the providers on behalf of a patient to get the data from different provider and aggregates it. And this is where our experience in health information exchange and data aggregation comes in, because what we are doing here is basically an health information exchange, one patient at a time. And so this, this system of get connecting to multiple different systems and aggregating the data together is something that we have a lot of experience with that we could put in good use in this patient, single patient case. So we can also get data using CDS, CCD, via Apple Health Kit or downloading them directly. But Fire is easier to use and it's, go, it's, uh, it's an MU in a meaningful use stage three. All the systems that are going to be MU3 compliant must have an API accessible. And the Cures Act says that patients have the right to get their data, to get their data in electronic form transferred to an application of their choice. So this is something that is mandated that this should be possible. And this does not require this does not require business agreements because it's a patient that is getting their, their own data on their app of their choice. So it does not require, require for us or any app vendor to get business agreement with all the, with all the individual provider. That in our experience is where a lot of integration project fails, not just for technological reason, but for this reason of getting authorization and getting the business agreement and getting the trust. Once all the data is inside the app, we can be provide a longitudinal view across all the data, and we can point, pinpoint where data is different from different providers, so we can alert the, the user, the patient, that maybe one provider knows about something and another provider does not know about some of the information. And we allow the patient to edit their information also. So they can add an allergy or edit the medications or add medications. And the other things we can do, we can share data inside the app. So if, uh, if another family member has, has a login, we can share the, application, the data between family members. 
So one mother can, can manage the, the data for her kids or for uh, elder parents or, and also it can, can share if a provider is a caregiver as a login, you can share the data directly inside the app with a caregiver. And we can export data as CCDs from the app. So we can get all the data aggregated together and export it as a single continuity of care document. Okay, now let's see how this. Okay, I'm going to do the demo with a, I'm going to do a demo with a web application, so. So this is this is how it looks like in the in the web. So now this is this is looks like how it looks like when a when a patient just created the login, just created an account. So there's no data in here. The only data there is is that I have birthdays because I enter my my birth date. So here I can connect, I can connect to a provider. So in this case I will. This is a test. This is a test system. So I will connect with the sandboxes, with the patient, the test sandbox. So this is the EPIC sandbox. So here I can enter my login, my login on the... The, the EPIC system asks for authorization from a patient to allow access to the data. We are asking for a second confirmation here because there is a, the patient doesn't match completely the name. The, the name of a patient on the, on, the, on the my chart on the EPIC sandbox is Mary Ann, and the name I enter in the system is Mary A. So it asked me to confirm that this is actually the patient that I want. Okay, and now I have a connection here that is fetching data. Now I can connect to something else. This is our own fire sandbox. He asked me for confirmation. Okay, and now I The data has been fetched in the background from the server to the servers. And now here, if I refresh, you see that now, now I have data. I've imported, this is most, mostly have medication data, and you can see also the sources. So some of these came from Epic Sandbox. Some came from our, from our own. So this is an example of how we, how we can log in to different log into different uh, providers and get and aggregate all the data. And once we have the connections, we can keep the connections provided that the, provided that the providers support uh, offline access or so long-live long token, we can maintain the connection so you can keep getting the data updated without having to log in again multiple times. Okay. And uh, I cannot run the app here, so I have a video of how the same process looks from the uh, iOS app. So I'm, I'm starting with the same point. So we have vo I have those two, and now I'm connecting to a third, to a third uh, provider, that is uh, the Cedar sinai test system. That they are running Epic, so you will see that the login screen is still an Epic login screen. Now, there was no password. Now you have to enter the actual password. And is a, is the same is the same patient demographic, so will match. Again, there is the authorization, so you have to allow access.
And now I have three providers. So that the, the two I connected before and, uh, and the Cedar Sinai. Now it, fetched, if I, it finished fetching the data. <coughs> so now I have, more uh, I have more modification, but now I have also immunizations and allergies because we are getting, we are getting all the available data. So in the, in the Cedar Sinai, we have, um, okay, these are the medication details. Now I have a lot of medications because the Cedar Sinai, I enter a lot of medication for that test patient. I can get a view with, with details. So we can, uh, we can have more details like where, where, where each medication came from and uh, this, the, the details of prescription. And you can see that, for example, uh, lisinopril, uh, that, that, has, that is known to all, all the providers. And I have a warning at the, at the top that says that some of the medication are not known in all the providers. So some providers have different data. And other things we do, we can detect interactions, possible dangerous interaction between, between drugs. So now you have, uh, because the, for one medication that came from CEDARS are a, a, as a possible negative interaction of another medication. I have a warning, I have a warning here. And finally here is a demo of editing that, the medication. So I can say, no, I'm not taking this. The patient can choose and say, I'm not taking this. But we, we keep the record, but it will get in, 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 inactive. And also I can add the medication. So if I, if I know I, I, I'm getting something else, I can complete, can complete the record. And we have, a, we have a database of all the medication that you can search. OK. One minute. But the video just finished. So. And okay, so this is this is uh, what, what we have now. What are we What are we look What are we looking as uh, as further development? We are looking into a single sign-on. So instead of having to create a, your your login using uh, use Facebook or Google to log in, and possible use the same the same system in the, in the portals. Uh, various usability improvement, and a thing that has been requested a lot is be able to share data. So once the, I have a curated list of medications and allergies and of problems in the hand of a, of a patient, how I can share this data back to the back to the to a caregiver and Android support. But the three of these first things are we are done them. Together with the ONC, the ONC it is, uh, that is running this medication list project that started last year and is continuing this year. That is a project that gets together uh, the provider, EHR vendors, and app vendors to work on this, to work on this problem of how to get this data in the end of consumers. And, uh, and that's it. It's, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.